Hey, it's me, Steve. It is July 31st, 2017. Time is 1221. It's 84 degrees Fahrenheit out, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the solar eclipse. I've been going online a lot to try to see more detail about it, and I've mistakenly gone to some YouTube videos, but I'm going to address, I'm going to tell, somebody did post, actually a couple people have asked a legitimate question, which I'm going to deal with, but first I just want to let you know, there is a lot of woo-woo and a lot of bullshit floating around out there. Apparently, I don't know if you remember the whole Mayan calendar or we're all going to die in December 2012 because Nabooru and all that shit. Well, apparently Nabooru's back. It's still a fucking imaginary thing that doesn't exist. No one's going to die. But anyway, that, that aside, the question is... If, the, if you're looking down at our solar system, at our North Pole, the Earth appears, or the Earth does, rotate counterclockwise. Um, same thing with uh, the Moon's orbit. It moves counterclockwise around the Earth. So if both are going counterclockwise, why is the eclipse moving from west to east? And I'm going to show you shortly a uh, graphic, you know, a, a cartoon I created illustrating why that happens. It's, I can see where that question comes from, but it, it's, it's very simply explained. Um, it's kind of the same thing. It's kind of the same reason why we have, uh, why we observe retrograde motion of the planets time to time. Um, it, and I will say it has to do with the orbital velocity of the moon compared to the rotational uh, speed of Earth along its axis. But let's get to it. Okay, so I'm going to explain to you why the shadow of a solar eclipse, of the shadow of the moon, moves from west to east. It's actually a really easy explanation. All right, here you see the Earth next to the moon. It's not the scale. Nothing here is. Uh, I, you know, I need to be able to fit it on the screen. Um, but it illustrates the point accurately. Now, you look here and you see, uh, looking down... At our North Pole, you can see the Earth rotates counterclockwise, you see by the red arrows, and the Moon also orbits counterclockwise. So this leads people to think that the uh, shadow of the eclipse has to move counterclockwise as well. Um, it doesn't, and I'm going to explain why that, that's just a, an incorrect assumption. Okay, first I'm going to show you here the path of totality that's supposed to occur on August 21st, 2017, which is less than a month away now. Um, the path is the gray area on this map. Now, the path looks curved because the Earth is a globe and this is a flat projection of the United States, but on an actual globe it would move straight across. So, there's your path of totality. Now, if you look here, you notice the times. I did all, I did all of this in central time uh, just to be consistent and to show you that, see, the shadow is going to move from west to east. Uh, I highlighted beginning at 1245 to 1345. So that may seem counterintuitive if the Earth is uh, rotating counterclockwise upon its axis and the moon is also orbiting counterclockwise but it's actually not it makes total sense so here's what we're going to observe and this is what people think needs to happen and it doesn't this does not need to happen at all all right let's give you some statistics here the moon's orbital velocity is about 1.02 kilometers per second. The Earth's rotational velocity is about 0.46 kilometers per second. I'm not going to turn it into imperial for you. If you need it in that, just go to the converter online. Um, but the Earth's rotational velocity, that's at the equator, which is at its fastest velocity. All right? So, as you can see, the moon is orbiting about the Earth about roughly twice as fast as the earth is rotating now you got to remember like i said this is not to scale the moon is is larger than it actually is in this and it's a lot further away than, than this but it's still orbiting the earth at twice the speed that the earth is rotating upon its axis at the equator 
all right and and like I said it's about a two to one ratio roughly so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you the path using even increments I'm going to even though this is not the scale the moon is gonna move two units for every one unit the earth rotates and you're gonna see something okay so let's see here's the moon shadow I put the direction of the sun the sun's not included in here it's so far away it's not relevant and I added a nighttime side to the earth I actually tried to do it on the moon but it just made it look like a gray mess so I just took it out and decided to write the moon shadow and I'm highlighting a city for you in the northern hemisphere of North America where the uh, path of totality is going to be in, in that is Chicago all right um, and now the Chicago word is going to disappear but the yellow dot representing Chicago is going to stay now watch what happens as the moon moves counterclockwise and the earth rotates counterclockwise at a two to one ratio so here's first contact all right just arbitrary just to show you what's going to happen here a little further progression as you notice the moon is getting closer to Chicago see that and it's forming a west to east line across the sky and there it passes Chicago from west to east and eventually the eclipse ends and totality is done so what you basically just saw there was the perfect example is it's is is a perfect illustration of why the eclipse the shadow moves from west to east there's uh, um, there's nothing ominous about it it's just how it normally should be but in case you didn't uh, or were not able to understand that I'm going to show you it from a different perspective okay so now you, you've just seen why the solar eclipse path of totality moves from west to east there's nothing mysterious about it but just to clarify I'm going to show you from a different perspective instead of a top-down we're going to be looking closer to the ecliptic now I want you to remember um, the following images that I took are from Google Earth and I don't have that tool that does the uh, that's able to spin it for me at a constant rate, rotate the earth, so I had to do it manually. So it's gonna be off, but it still illustrates the point. And so let's get to that. Okay, now here I'm going to show you the path of totality as it actually will go across the surface of the earth. Basically, this is just a different angle from what I just showed you in the previous illustration. But if in case you couldn't, um, or didn't notice it or couldn't wrap your head around it hopefully this version will help as well and it's going to be more of what you're going to see here the yellow dot with the white circle is the city of chicago after this you're going to see the word chicago disappear but the yellow dot's going to be there all right okay here's the moon shadow now the moon's shadow doesn't during totality does not it, it's not a perfect circle all right, as it moves across, it's an ellipse, and as it gets further towards the night side of the planet, it actually changes shape again. But for practicality purposes here, I'm just going to illustrate it as a circle. It works just fine to illustrate my point, okay? So the gray dot with the black circle is going to be the moon shadow. The word moon shadow is going to disappear from here on. Now, remember, the Earth... Or the, the moon orbits the sun about two times faster than the earth rotates upon its axis at the equator. All right, so we still have that two to one ratio. So the, the green arrow just represents the shorter uh, rotational speed of the earth compared to the red arrow, which is the orbital velocity of the moon um, and the movement of its shadow So across the earth's surface. Okay, so here we go. Uh, just an arbitrary beginning as it approaches North America. Now watch, you'll see the Earth rotate beneath it and moving counterclockwise. But remember, this, this 2 to 1 ratio is still maintained. All right? 
I'm still going to make the moon's shadow move twice as fast across the surface as the Earth is going to rotate. And you'll see, all right, there's just an arbitrary rotation later, all right, a little more. Now, as you can see, just like in the other example, the moon is getting really close to Chicago and moving from west to east. And then, finally, there we are, we're done. All right. And it has passed it from a west to east motion. So the apparent path of the moon's shadow was west to east. And there's nothing odd about it. I know from, uh, from a quick logic standpoint it doesn't seem to make sense, but it totally does once you try to graphically illustrate what's going on. So I think that is it, and hopefully that clears things up for you.